In a previous video, Mike explained why it can be so hard to make sense of the Bible's teachings on the end times. The key is to rightly divide the word. The Bible describes many end times events in ways that seem similar, but it's actually talking about different things. There are four main end times events that people often conflate. Number one, the rapture of the church at the beginning of the tribulation. Number two, the rapture of the tribulation saints during the tribulation. Number three, the second coming of Christ after the tribulation. And number four, the end of the world after the millennium. The Bible also talks about different kingdoms, and it's important to understand the difference between them as well. First, there's the kingdom of God, which is primarily spiritual in nature. Second, there's the kingdom of heaven, which is a physical kingdom. Thirdly, there's Christ's kingdom, which is when Christ is reigning on earth during the millennium. In this video, Mike begins taking us through passages relating to the end times, showing us how to rightly divide the word based on these different events and different kingdoms that the Bible describes. The Bible is full of similar but different events that need to be divided into the proper place uh, and so designated in your thinking if you're going to understand the word of God. Now Matthew 13, 40 says this. This is an example of the... Uh, uh, end of the age, end of the world events. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. So if you think there's just like one coming and one judgment, what you have here is at the end of the world, the angels go out through the whole earth, we'll see in another passage, and gather together all the sinners and burn them in the fire, and leaves the righteous on the earth. He said, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom. Wow. The, the kingdom. If you don't know the difference in the kingdoms, you'd have the angels going into the churches, gathering out of the kingdom all things that offend. Christians that offend in the church would be gathered out. Well, there's people who actually believe that, interpret that that way. They believe you can lose your salvation, that uh, the angels will come and pull you out of the church and pull you out of the kingdom of God and say you didn't, you weren't faithful enough. Uh, Gather out of his kingdom all things that offend in them which do iniquity and cast them to, into a furnace of fire. Now, if you understand that there's eight kingdoms, you know that Christ's kingdom right here during the thousand years is different from the kingdom of God different from the kingdom of heaven, that during this Christ kingdom, when Christ is king over the earth, there will be sinners on the earth during that time. And at the end of the kingdom of heaven, Christ's kingdom, the angels will come down and take the sinners out of the world. Now, you and I will have survived the great tribulation in heaven in glorified bodies and come back. We will be ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years and in glorified bodies. So we won't be at risk of being taken out of the kingdom. But those who survived, who refused the mark of the beast and survived the tribulation and went into the kingdom of heaven, the Christ kingdom at that point, and had babies, and the babies who died, like you have a child that died, be raised and grow to maturity during the kingdom of heaven and have a chance to respond to Christ during that Christ kingdom up on the earth. So he's going to send his angels and gather out of his kingdom, literally his kingdom, all things that offend and those that do iniquity and burn them in fire. And what's left in the kingdom of heaven are the righteous. <laughs> you couldn't square that with any rapture passage. That's totally a different event. And then... Uh, in Matthew 13, 29, similarly, he said, uh, uh, Let both grow together unto the harvest. At the harvest I will say unto the reapers, Gather ye first the tares, and bind them into bundles to burn them. The reapers are the angels. So the man has a field full of wheat. Tares have come up in the wheat. He has another parable about that. And the first thing the farmer does is before he tramples the tares down into the wheat or gets it mixed up in the cutting process, and I've watched the Amish do this, they'll go out into the field with a knife and they will have a sack and they will cut these seeded tares. 
They will cut them and put them in a sack. They'll walk carefully through the whole field, getting all the tares out of the field. And they won't go and lay them on the side because they don't want the seeds to get back in the garden. And they'll take them, they'll put them in a pile, and they'll burn the tares. Now the wheat, the, the wheat field is standing perfectly purged. That's, what's, that's not the rapture, obviously. Uh, it's not the righteous taken out. It's the tares taken out, which occurs at the end of the millennial reign of Christ upon the earth. Bind them, into, bind them in bottles. Now, he said that's the end of this world. The question was, what happens at the end of this world? So the world doesn't end until after the 1,000-year reign of Christ. And then it's, it's burnt up, as you see here, earth destroyed. And then there's a new heavens and a new earth created. That's at least 1,007 years away. Uh, this end of this present earth could be much longer. I don't know. Uh, then in Matthew thirteen forty nine, he says, "So shall the be wicked be at the end of this world." In, in, in other words, it's not just the end of the world; it's the end of this particular world. There will be a new one created, and sever the wicked from among the just. Now. Uh, P Second Peter three ten speaks of it, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So here is the heavens passing away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. That's obviously not the rapture, which is followed by all of these events in seven years. It's obviously uh, something much more cataclysmic. Seeing then that these things, uh, did, did I miss something? Yes, let me read that again. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the elements shall pass away with a great noise. Heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt. That means that the 128, 30, whatever it is, elements will all dissolve into nothingness. And the earth also and all the works that are therein shall be burned up. So this whole earth is going to be burnt into an unrecognizable conglomerate of elements. Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, it's the very dissolving of the atom, uh, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? He said, <laughs> when you think about this world is going to cease to exist, don't buy stock in it. Don't place your hope in it. Don't make this your future. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. So even the atmosphere is going to burn up. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, you, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So I painted here this new earth, the seven new things. My uh, handbook that goes with this chart tells you about the seven new things. And then, now here is a different passage. This is the rapture. The rapture taking place right here, where the living saints are taken up out of their graves and taken straight on into heaven. The sinners are left behind. They're not gathered together at tares first and bound in bundles. Sinners are untouched. They go into the tribulation. Okay, Here it is in um, 1 Thessalonians 4.14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, them also which sleep in Jesus, that's the people, Christians are in their graves, but their spirits are present, not their bodies, but just their spirits are present with Christ in heaven. Those which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, this is event going up into heaven, will not go in the, will not be raptured up, prevent ahead of time, those others, will not prevent them which are asleep, that's the dead in Christ. Uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the graves open up first. So if I'm standing in a graveyard, and I've got one here on my property, my mama and stepdaddy's buried in it, and other friends and people have died, some of them younger than me, and uh, got a nice little graveyard here, and I, I drive by it a half a dozen times a day, my little buggy, maybe more, 
and I go up and cut the grass. So I imagine myself up there cutting the grass and the rapture takes place. Some of those graves date back to the Indians. They're real old uh, hand-carved stones or just big rocks piled up, a carn of rocks piled up. And uh, so the graves will actually open. The ground's actually going to split open. And out of the ground are going to come the bodies of these dead saints. Some of them have been dead 200 years maybe. And their bodies are going to come up and they're going to be, and I'm going to be watching them go, and whoop, there I go right behind them. And so they'll come out of the grave in time enough for me to get a look at them <laughs> and maybe wonder if I made it, you know. <laughs> but I know I will. But, I mean, here you are, you're watching the rapture take place. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there it goes. Uh -oh. And then I'm gone. So I get taken up. If we which are alive remain to come in order shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort you one another with these words. So the, speaking to Christians, the Bible said, be comforted by the end time events. Let it be comfort to you. Because this is the way it ends. As a thief in the night, unexpectedly, as they were in the days of no eating, drinking, marriage, and giving in marriage, knew not till the flood came, took them all away, so shall it be. So un, unbeknowings, un, no, no indication, no signs, no warnings, no antichrist, nothing prophesied to precede it, a preeminent uh, coming of the Lord. That's <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, comforted by that. I'm encouraged by that. Uh, could be in the next three minutes, three seconds, three days. Now, if we were going to have to go through any portion of this tribulation, I wouldn't be comforted. I would say, man, this is getting close. I need to buy some more food. I need to get some more guns so I can shoot all the sinners. Uh, and a lot of Christians are that dumb. But I'm going to leave all my guns behind. I'm going to leave all my stored up food behind. I'm going to leave my gardens behind. And I'm just going to be gone. And it's split second, and then all of this takes place. So that's why it's confusing, it's because you've got two different, two different events taking place, the rapture and the second coming. Now, Matthew 24, 3, And he set up on Mount Olives, his disciples came unto him privately, saying unto him, Tell us what shall these things be, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of that coming and of the end of the world? So they're their question was, when are these things about the destruction of the Mount, uh, temple going to happen? And what is the sign of that coming? S a separate question. And what, when is the end of the world? Now, they thought that was all one event. See, they conflated these events. So Jesus is going to answer the question. Three questions they asked. They didn't know they thought they asked one. And he's going to answer it. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to get every verse here. You can read Matthew 24 yourself, but he talks about uh, take heed that you don't be deceived. Many will come in my name saying I'm Christ. Uh, there'll be wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, earthquakes, diverse places, famine, disease, SARS, uh, COVID-19. <laughs> I added that. Uh, they, they deliver you up to be afflicted. They'll kill you. You'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's already happening in Russia and China. North Korea, many false prophets shall arise, shall deceive many, iniquity shall abound, love of many shall wax cold. And then he says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now that's not the end of the world, because he says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. So he said, there'll be a sign of this end. You'll see what Daniel predicted when the Antichrist sets up an image of himself in the temple and demands people worship it. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So in other words, these events precede the second coming. This is how the end of this age will take place. So he tells them to flee into the mountains. Now, you're not in Judea, so it wouldn't apply to you, obviously. Uh, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So 
That's the tribulation when so many people are dying. And he said, uh, be false Christ, false prophets. And then we come to verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now that's not what he just described above. That's not that lengthy description of Antichrist and wars and rumors of wars and difficulties and fleeing, going to the south, and uh, being uh, the uh, Antichrist sending out a flood, uh, the ground opens up, uh, God sent, opens up uh, the ground, swallows the flood, saves the Jews. So all those events are not like lightning shining out of the east and coming unto the west, which is the rapture. Who set, where their server the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together immediately after the tribulation of those days. So there's your tribulation. And it, it follows the lightning, Christ coming back like lightning, the skies opening up. After the tribulation of those days, and that's what he described above, shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, <clears throat> the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So that's protracted e events taking place in sequence. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And they and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn when they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's not like the lightning shining out of the east and unto the west. This provides a time for people to see signs of his coming. No signs for the rapture. To, but where are the signs? He just described that long list up there in the earlier part of the chapter. When the Antichrist shows up and the temple's desecrated and the Jews are persecuted and 144,000 are sealed, uh, like we got here, uh, right here, 144,000 sealed, chapter 14. Chapter 7 and chapter 14, I, I forgot that. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Uh, they sh uh, all the tribes of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man come in the clouds of heaven. Now, verse 31. And he shall send his angels. Now, this is not him. This is not Christ coming in the air. At this point, this is him. I mean, in other words, it's not the rapture where he makes this sudden appearance. Then shall he send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So this is a post-tribulational rapture of those who were saved and died during this time. And then we read, now this is, this is in contrast. That, here we had three different events described. Here in contrast, listen to this. Matthew 13, 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. End of this world. He didn't say at his second coming. He didn't say at the rapture. He said at the end of this world, the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. The Son of Man shall send his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom. Now, that's the kingdom of heaven that will take place for a thousand years. All things that offend and they which do iniquity. <clears throat> now, think about if you tried to apply this to the rapture, the second coming. You'd have God coming down, Jesus coming down, sending his angels out to gather out of his kingdom. That would be the church if you take it to be the kingdom of of God. Now, if you don't know the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, you'd be real confused here. Because you'd have the angels coming down, going through all the churches, and gathering everybody <clears throat> that's offended or done iniquity, and casting them into a furnace of fire. And that's the first event that takes place at that coming. It's not a gathering together of the Christians or of the saints, even. It's not a resurrection. It's the angels coming back and going through the kingdom, finding all the sinners, pulling them out, taking them to a judgment, the great white throne, 
where they're cast into the lake of fire. So you've got four different events, uh, eschatological events taking place here. And so if you don't understand the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, uh, then you're not going to understand the scriptures very well. But it's quite clear once you get a grasp of, pay attention, when he says the end of the world, he means the, uh, the end of the world, when the actual the world is burnt up here at that point. Uh, so when he says the end, that's not necessarily the end of the world. That can be the end of the tribulation, the end of the present age. It can be the end of, of anything that, that he designates in the context. So uh, that's, this has been kind of lengthy, but we're going to go into some more scripture. In fact, we're going to go into every passage in the New Testament that deals with the second coming, the rapture, the tribulational rapture, the end of the millennium, the end of the age, the end of the world. Any of those passages, we're going to deal with every single one of them. You're going to see them in their context, and it's going to make an awful lot of sense to you. So that's all for now.